Hello and welcome to I Am International. I'm your host today, Ruby, an aspiring lawyer and fashion entrepreneur. Today in the My Journey section, we have a little twist. I'll be interviewing a very special guest. This person is like a big brother to me, a mentor. All the way from Ombasi, Ghana, Carleton University's 2019 to 2020's President Student Services, entrepreneur and CEO of the George Legacy Foundation, a musician and business analyst. Welcome to the show, George. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. So, George, I know you've been a recent graduate right now and you're working as a business analyst. So, you know, tell us a bit about who you are right now and what's going on. What are your current projects? Um, so, currently, um, by profession, I'm a business analyst. I work with ASEC Student Care. I'm an insurance brokerage firm in Toronto in the financial district. Um, but aside from that, I'm involved in a few other initiatives, be music, legacy music, um, in partnership with Path Ravon. Um, we have different other initiatives that we're working with as well. Um, but in a nutshell, we have the foundation as well, which is the George Legacy Foundation, where you know the whole goal is bettering the lives of international students here um, in Canada and in their diaspora as well. Um, I think that is a good amount of things that I'm doing right now to talk about. <laughs> uh, we can obviously touch on different things as the show um, goes on, but so far, so good. That's what's going on. That's very interesting. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you very much. So now I want to just dive a bit into, like, you know, the international realm of you, you know. Okay. Um, I know you came to Carleton University pretty early on when you were pretty young, and um, explain that experience to, to, to me. Explain that to the viewers. Like, how did it feel being an international student, you know? Small little George coming into the big Canada. <laughs> yeah. Into big Canada. How did yeah. you feel? Um, Canada was... It was it was an amazing experience um, from start and it's I wouldn't say finished because it's not over yet and I don't plan for it to be <laughs> um, Canada was a great experience and I've learned so much um, through my journey but um, taking it back to me um, Canada was a great opportunity I would say um, not just experience but the fact that I was able to leave um, where I was to be able to make it to come to a place like this and to be even having a conversation like this and being um, you know in involved in initiatives like this is what is crazy and what baffles me. Um, I come from a small town, um, a mining town actually in Ghana called Obasi in the Shanti region. Um, went to school there, did lived my whole life there, born and bred. Um, went to high school in Kumase. Shout outs to all the Akatechi, um, <laughs> representing BR 576, and you know what's going on. Um, but yeah, I went to Pokwari School, did the business program there, um, and business four wrote my WASI exams, um, and then we can kind of get into the process of me coming into Canada, but um, first of all, I was supposed to go into the United States, right? Canada was not my option, number one. Okay. Um, I always wanted to go to the States. Um, I wrote my ACTs. I wrote SATs. Man, I wrote all the exams that you can think of because I knew that, you know, I had a mindset and I had a vision for my life and not that it wouldn't have been possible um, in Ghana, but from the circles and the, cir the, the the people that I found around me and you know the things that were going on around me I felt like I needed something bigger to mm. be able to Handle the type of vision that I had okay. um, and you know, there's always um, It's always good to go home go out learn and bring it back home So, you know, I figured that Canada or somewhere um, out there was somewhere It was something that was better for me um, rather than staying there and so I applied to the States um, I actually got into a school called Miami University um, I got a scholarship to study there as well. So I was pretty armed, you can think about it, um, just writing my exams. Um, I didn't do too great in my WASI results, um, but my um, ACTs were okay enough to get me into the school. Um, I got into the school, I went through the process, went to go get my visa, and then I got denied for my visa. Oh. So I graduated school in 2015, which is boarding school at Pokuari in Kumase, and I wasn't able to get into school. All my friends were going to school. Um, it was a really crazy year, I would say, um, but, you know, through, you know, talking to my cousin who was already here, Nana Safari, shout out to Nana, he put me on, um, told me about Carlton, told me about the program, um, but it was too late, right? At that point, it was too late, and it was, admissions already passed, oh. I was too late, so I had to be home. So admissions has passed for Carlton University? For, or for, for the university in, in general. general. Oh my gosh. Right, because I didn't buy, I didn't apply to any schools in Ghana, because I was like, I wrote my ACTs. I got. I already got into the school. I already got the scholarship. So I was like, why would they not give me the visa? Right. It was not a full scholarship, guys. By the way, um, obviously, if you have um, higher scholarships, it 
betters your chances for sure. I was just being exactly. I was being very hopeful. Um, even in the application process, man, so many people in my year um, applied to different schools, and I wasn't really, you know, amongst the top people who people really expected, um, you know, to be getting admissions into schools because. You know, getting even to know about SATs and even studying abroad was something that was not, as I said, very foreign to me. Because from my high school, nobody's really talking about mm. um, the the junior high school that I went to. Nobody's really talking about I want to go here or anything like that. People go to school, they graduate. Most of them end up teaching in the school, teaching in the cities. You know, a couple of them make it out um, and are doing awesome and amazing things. But it's not really the talk of the school to you know, oh, I want to do this and I want to go to Canada. And I want to write SAT. No, so Pukwa is where. I learned about all these things. Shout out to my friend Ebeneza, um, Theophilus in my class. They helped me. They showed me the process and gave me an overview of what really studying outside Ghana was and, you know, how beneficial it could be to your upbringing. So, you know, I took that information and I run with it. I didn't necessarily run on their level because, you know, I really believe in one thing that I can do anything um, that anyone can do, but my way would be different and my way would be yeah. special. Even it might not be as nice as yours, but something would be unique about mine that would make my stand out more than what you would do. And so I went through the process, um, got rejected. So I had to, you know, fall back into the stereotype. I was at home and I was a people school teacher from, I don't even know what age, from 2015 to 2016. Um, my friends were in school. I used to wake up every morning and go teach from grade six to grade four. ICT, so ICT is Information Communication Technology, it's basically computer studies, mm -hmm. um, and I used to teach them um, every day, I used to take the bus to school um, with the kids in the bus, like, you know, telling the kids to keep quiet, it's, it's actually crazy, <laughs> uh, now that I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about that, you know, um, and we'll be, you know, I don't know, for those who know, um, you know, in Ghana, that's not really like in Obwase, in that specific school, let me say that, um, it's not really like, the buses are not like some high class tech you know buses um where some of the times we're hanging we're standing like you know at the door of the bus just kind of holding the bus oh, wow. um and just kind of going through because the bus is the bus is packed mm -hmm. right um but that was kind of like experience and what happened was um you know the need or you feeling like just letting go and giving up was there because it was like okay what am i you know going to do and you know after the all the work that you put in right you you have to study the sat curriculum aside from studying your actual YX so you were, stuff. Like, doing a double so you, grind. you go to class in the morning, yeah. and then after class, me and my friends would go after preps nine o'clock. We'd go back to the classroom to study that because that's a whole. It has nothing to do with what we were doing mm -hmm. in school. The math, everything was different, right? So we had to go buy the book. The book is like this big, the SAT book. Anybody who has had to go through the whole SAT struggle um, definitely knows what I'm talking about and can feel it. But fast forward, so we don't talk too much. Went through the process. Applied to Canada and then I got into Canada. Okay. Um, I got into Carleton um, University to. I got in actually undeclared. I got into Carleton without a major. Oh wow! Really? Um, yeah, because they said that my grades were not, um, you know, good enough to give me a program. They know they wanted me to come to the school, but they weren't really sure, you know. And that's why I kind of come with my, what I said, believing in myself and knowing that you know, even though my I knew my grades were not tip top, right. Um, I had friends who had the best grades, better SAT grades than I did, um, got into way better schools than I did. But, you know, I believe in God and my God leads me and he orders my steps in everything that I do. And so, you know, through that and persevering and pushing, I was able to get into Carleton Undeclared. Um, and, you know, when you're back home, you think Undeclared is such a big thing, but you come to school and you realize, like, you can switch programs like this. You can be Undeclared exactly. today and be in a program tomorrow. tomorrow. Um, but then those, all those, those are all things that you learn um, as time goes on. So that's kind of a little bit uh, what's going on, what happened, the process, and I guess we're probably gonna get into it more. Definitely, um, you yeah. literally touched on almost every and anything. But yeah. thank you so much for sharing that back part because I feel like that's very interesting and very important for us to like pave the way through this um, interview. So now you're in Carlton, right? I, I want you to walk me through like you know your undergraduate, your undergraduate yeah. um, time there, like. What did you um, join? What associations associations did you join? Like, what were you affiliated with? How did um, you feel? How did you identify with your Carlton community? Like, yeah, when I came uh, to Carlton, um, I didn't get in the residence first of all because I came late. And uh, that's um, a really big thing. Like, yeah. I feel like 
when you're in residence, it's a it's a great chance for you to meet yeah. a lot of yeah. first years and yeah. to communicate with people in your community. But yeah. like not being in residence for first years, it's pretty hard. So yeah. how did you manage? Yeah, to do man, that? it was very difficult um, from the start. I didn't really know too many people. Um, mm-hmm. I had my roommates that I lived with. Um, shout out to them. Um, but we lived in the south. Um, but that was mostly it for me. I didn't really have any friends on campus. Um, I had my cousin, Mohammed, that I came to school with um, from Ghana, but that was mostly it. Um, in with respect to my peers that I could like reach out to and talk to, um, so it was very difficult navigating the halls. And um, you know, it's it's one thing that I, I as I always say that you know it's the need to not be regular, not to not be just like everybody yeah. else, right? Um, I think what happened with me is I saw the trend. I, I was able to, God placed me around people where, you know, were way ahead of me. And I was able to actually put things together and, you know, see where different paths in terms of what you do when you're in school leads you. Mm-hmm. And I think it helped me in making a better decision of how I wanted to direct my life and how I wanted to direct my path. Super important. So, but the most important thing I would say is connections, mm-hmm. making connections, talking to people, getting to know people. And that's the one thing that I think really helped me and most international students don't really tap into. Um, you know, getting to know people, um, sometimes it may be hard. It might be hard. Your accent might be off, man. You, you, God knows my accent was very different from what it sounds like right now um, <laughs> when I was here in first year. But it's something that you adapt to and something that, you know, it, it grows on you as time goes on. But I wasn't shy in that, in that aspect. I put my best foot forward. Um, and then I talked, um, you know, to people, I reached out to people, um, connections, and through that, that was how I met so many people that may play very vital roles um, you know, in my journey. What I think is so um, interesting about you is that, you know, you're just a small boy that came from Ghana, mm-hmm. and then you now came to Carlton University, and you managed to mobilize so many people and inspire so many students, domestic and international students yeah. at Carlton. You were now um, the um, student service vice president yeah. you were also worked at the international student center yeah. you did multiple events at carlton community yeah. um for international students um you even inspired me so like how did you manage to get into those communities how did you manage to also make a very important statement because even up to now i feel like if you go to carlton university and you say george legacy they will know that it's you so like yeah. how did you manage to do that despite all the things you've been through and um, all the circumstances that played as part? you said right um a lot of people have been mentored by me. Someone also mentored me, right? Mm-hmm. And that is what I think I'm always getting to when I'm talking, when it comes to not taking some opportunities for granted. Mm-hmm. Um, during my time at Carlton, you know, I saw what was going on. I'm a very observant and a, analytical person. So I saw what was going on. I saw what was going on in campus. I was nowhere close to it or even knew anything about it. All I could do was see, you know, a bunch of people on campus who you know, I, I just saw them like, these guys have more to it than just being students. These guys, you know, yeah, they go to class, like all of us, but then after they have society that they belong to where, you know, they have, it can make impact and they can um, suggest ideas and make change and to benefit them and their people. So I said, man, I would want to be part of something. I would want to know whatever is making impact on this community. And if it's going to better my life and the people after me and my friends, then why not? So why not? Exactly. I looked into opportunities where life could be better on campus for me and not just me, but me and my friends. And so the only way to do that was to, first of all, start at home. And so me and a couple of my friends um, looked into um, starting the Ghanaian Students Association, which was already Wow. Um, they are Carlton, but was a little bit dormant. Mm-hmm. Um, so me, myself, um, our president, Frank, um, a couple of other executives, um, mm-hmm. we took to ourselves to reach out to the previous team. We sat down, negotiated, and did the whole transfer of the association. And that was one of the best um, things that I ever did. Um, and, you know, it's not just about just doing it, but it's having the people around you that would, you know, pour into you and will tell you you can do it, man. Mm-hmm. You can try because... A lot of people try to do a lot of things, mm-hmm. man, but it's because of the people that are around them. Um, if you don't have the right support group, the right people to support you in your roles, then you wouldn't be able to get to where nobody gets to wherever they are alone by themselves. So through the Ghanaian Student Association, we started programming. We started putting our feet down because we knew that nobody was going to make ourselves known. We would have to do it ourselves. Yeah. We would have to put in the effort. As I always say, the energy you put in is what you get back. If you want to get some positive energy back, you have to put in hard work and dedication and focus and that's how you're only going to be successful, mm-hmm. right? So um, I took that route. 
um, we started programming on campus, people started getting to know us and you know, I think that just followed us even with everything we did, even if we did a little event, there was something special about our event that was different than anybody else's event, anybody yeah. else's function. And then from there, um, you know, going into the International Student Center, becoming a counselor for the Faculty of Arts and Social Science, oh, yeah. my involvement um, at Campus Rush as well, uh, my church. Um, so that's my church. I've been going there um, since first year. Um, and I was privileged enough, um, thank you, Pastor Kofi, um, to be in charge of the first week of school programming um, for the first years when they would come, kind of like bringing them together, um, fellowshipping with them and facilitating a one week long program um, where they can, um, you know, come and fellowship with other students and also, you know, get to be connected and make, you know, connections, um, which will help them in class and, you know, all sorts of um, areas of their school um, and the school journey as well, as well as the Christian journey as well. Um, and so through that, um, I was able to, you know, learn how to be a leader. I had a team where um, we worked together, programmed for a whole week for over 30,000 students. And sorry to cut you yeah. off, I was actually there at the first week of yeah. the Campus Rush facilitating yeah. you did, and it was honestly amazing. Like, the community aspect of it, it was beautiful. And yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that. So yeah, so <laughs> we were programming for about, you know, 30,000 students, and that was something that was very, um, you know, huge for me, because coming from, you know, a school, the one coming from Steadfast Academy, awesome school, I learned so much from Steadfast Academy, um, I say the things about Stephens Academy not to put Stephens Academy down, but then to let people know the value that you can get even from a small school like that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's lessons that I've learned that you probably wouldn't learn in a school full of computers and glass and, you know, nice buses and all of that. There's some lessons that I've learned that, that you know, are still today with me and is pushing me and keeping me going. Um, yeah, so through those initiatives is how I got connected. Um, as I always mention connection, got connected on campus. Um, even in the Ottawa community yeah. um, and that is how I was able to you know make strides okay now walk us through how you felt winning the election how did you feel when they counted the votes and they not projected on the screen that you are the new VP um, of student services oh, how did you feel what emotions were running through man you? the emotions were crazy um, the emotions were it was it was out of the world man because you know the thing is I've never really been and everybody who knows me would know that I've never been the guy to be running for leadership positions in school, no. Um, you know, from a younger age, yes, I've always had my um, talent to try and, you know, be known where I am based on the different gifts that God has given me. But um, running for student position or trying to be a leader in school was not really something that um, interested me. But, you know... Shout out to Lily. Um, Lily, when I met her Lily. first year, um, you know, she 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 showed me something, and and I saw a difference. I saw her, and I saw all the other friends, um, you know, that are international as well. And I saw that no, you know, this person is living a different type of life. Even though we're all living the international student life, she's getting access to some benefits that are available for exactly. all of us, but we're not tapping into it. And so that's why bring bring that brings me back to my mentorship. Um, thing that I was talking about where you have to have a good mentor in your life who you can learn from even if it's afar or close you can learn from you can pick you can ask questions and so that's how um, you know I was able to get even into all the communities that I was on but back to the election thing um, I didn't know what to expect man because as you said like I'm international student I didn't really know anyone um, that many people before the election being on campus apart from my little community my people my friends from church my friends from class um, but with the help of my team, um, you know, and the kind of hard work and the ethic, we, the eth work ethic that we had, man, we were, you know, in the tunnels for hours, talking to people for hours. I'm telling you, you cannot win a, an election at Carleton if you do not put, on, put in countless hours of hard work and everybody sure. sees it. Um, and so that day, I think, what, what, what was I feeling? I was feeling a sense of fulfillment. Mm. I felt like anything that I put my mind to I can get it because that looked like the most impossible thing to me in my whole life and even that was possible so I was like I was at the top and I was like okay I'm ready to go um you know I can see that the path is clear whatever it is I put my mind to as long as I work hard enough it's gonna be mine okay. and that's kind of how um I live my life and I've applied that energy to every single thing that I've done we love it we love it now I'm gonna ask you like how do you feel how do you uh 
overcome adversity so i know in that time of you running and campaigning it's probably a lot of things coming into your ears and mm -hmm. it's just a lot of pressure with school you being a black man yeah. an international student how yeah. did you come with that adversity um it's it's adversity comes always it mm -hmm. always happens um and you would be forgive my language foolish to not expect it right it's about what happens after the adversity comes are you gonna pack your bags and leave or are you gonna pick up your bag and say no i'm gonna do this um and i think me when i get into situations like that it even gingers me more mm -hmm. to know that oh this thing tried to knock me down but i'm gonna definitely destroy it um and with that willpower and that ability to say no i'm going to win is what i believe has held me in everything that I've done, even when I'm playing to being serious, like I apply the same energy from start to end. That's how I do my stuff. Um, the energy is constant, the focus is constant. And if you work hard, I'm telling you, you will reap what you sow. It's amazing. So now let's move on to something a little bit different. Okay. You know, people call you legacy, right? Who is legacy? Like, what does <laughs> legacy stand for? Like, what is legacy? We don't know. Um, so legacy, legacy is... It's everything put in one. Legacy is everything that I am, who I am, what I am, everything that I do, what it speaks to. Um, legacy, the word itself is what you leave behind, mm. uh, what you're known for. And, you know, I believe that anywhere that I go in life, um, any place that I find myself, whether it's someone's house, whether it's a school, whether it's a country, whether it's a continent, I have to leave something there. I have to make impact there for people to come and ask, who did that? Uh, for people to know that someone um, like them um, did that. The reason why I do that is not just for myself, to better myself, to make myself the best version of myself because I have to do that if I'm going to start my own family, if I'm going to have people in this world that are going to be looking up to me. I have to be the best standard that they can look up to um, to help them get even higher than I am. So I can't slack or, you know, fall down from any little... Um, defeat or any little difficulties I have to always bounce back because then I can tell them when they fall down that they can get up because how do you pour into someone if you fall down and you don't get up anymore exactly. so that's kind of how I went about it that's amazing so now touching into your music career yeah. like we know you're an artist and a yeah. musician you play instruments like you literally do everything yeah. like tell us about some upcoming projects that you're doing with your music career and talk about how you even started that so music, I've always always been musically inclined um, from a child from childhood. I've always um, been into drums, so I've always played drums mm -hmm. in the church um, growing up, um, and I've always been a curious person. So as I said, with my work ethic, um, I made up my mind to definitely be. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do in music, what I wanted to be producing, what I wanted to be, you know, be singing, what I wanted to be managing. Um, so I decided, why not learn everything and then. You know choose whichever one i would want to specialize in but you know the more you get into the music game the more you learn that the more you know the better you are mm -hmm. um you can't just be a singer if you're a singer and you're a producer at the same time that means you know the sound that you want you want you exactly. know the type of sound that you want to produce so you make the music for yourself right and then when you learn how to manage yourself as an artist then you know the business side as well which is something that's very important in the industry as well when it comes to your papers your contracts your finances you have to have everything on point if you want to really be successful and to really make it in the journey. Um, so that's kind of like an overview, but I've always been playing drums. I've always been musically inclined. Um, music as an artist started in Canada mm -hmm. um, about two years ago, um, a little bit over a year, let me say that. Um, but yeah, that's mostly um, for legacy music, music made for you. Um, you. That's, <laughs> that's a little bit about uh, my music and how it started. Um, and how far I am in terms of future projects look for it to some amazing stuff from legacy music um, I can't talk too much about it here, but just stay tuned um, to my socials and um, Just stay tuned to all the socials on legacy music the legacy foundation um, And George legacy incorporated as well Okay, so George tell me a bit about what motivates you what pushes you um, despite all the things you've been through and and all the times you've fallen what helps you keep on getting back up um, I think for me number one is my family mm. um, obviously there's God um, which is number one but apart from that on this earth is my family um, I want to make my parents proud right my parents have invested a lot of money into me as an individual and I'm a very I'm a businessman so I like to see things very businessy regardless of whatever situation that um, it's in uh, my parents made a very big investment into me and so um, 
aside from everything that I have to do for myself, there's a lot at stake for me to, you know, not just misbehave or just, just not mess the opportunity up to make the most out of it. Um, and I think that's the one thing that pushes me aside from, you know, knowing that it's my calling and something that God has chosen for me to do. Um, that's the second thing. Um, but then the third thing is just me being the person that wants to better myself in any area that I am. If it's something that I'm involved with, I would want to be not the be the best at it than everybody, but the best at it for myself, so, knowing that in my capacity to do this specific thing, I'm doing it to the fullest. Mm -hmm. that's, that's all I need to know to be able to be okay, right? And when I was a student, like, and I really hope and I wish that I can relate to students that are out there. And I wasn't always the most smartest person in the room. I was never getting the A's and the B's, uh, maybe a couple B's and the C's, obviously. We're always swimming in the C's, definitely. But I've never really been in the studios. Well, not studios. I used to study a lot because I really used to want to be smart, mm -hmm. right? Um, growing up, as I said, in a place like Steadfast Academy, the only thing that people are praised or rewarded anything for it was academics we didn't have anything else like maybe like a music department or a creative department somewhere else you could shine you know everything was book and that was it you get beat um you get punished um depending on how good or bad you went you did so for someone who wasn't doing very good in school it was very difficult for me to you know think of myself as somebody who could even do something because i was like man like you know things were not working out i wasn't getting the grades getting 20 percent on math test you know mm -hmm. And I used to have a very smart family. Like my siblings are very smart. So being the odd one out, the um, black sheep, of the the black family. sheep and the family was just like very devastating. But you know, and especially as a child, man, it hits you differently. Yeah. Um, but you know, as I, I just kept on doing my best in whatever area, I knew that as long as I studied the most, I studied, I'd finished the, the, the stuff I'd read through, the best that I believed I could, I, I, I understood to myself that whatever result came after, was what was supposed to happen yeah. because I did my best as long as I did my best and I think it's something that helped me because as I kept on keeping the same energy with different types of results I still kept the same energy and in the long run it started to pick up and pick up and you know I'm proud to say that graduating at Carlton you know I was in some econ classes where I was topping grades in a class like wow. and that's like amazing because me thinking back and you know even my mates probably watching are like you know that's just crazy how did that go from back? It's about perseverance and it's about constant applying pressure. That's how you get results. Period, period. <laughs> okay, so where do you see yourself in the next five years? Like, you know, you've talked a lot about the past and like your upcoming music projects. So now I'm just kind of curious as, as to where you see yourself in the next five years with your work, you know, with your own personal projects. Like, what's what's up? Um, The next five years, we have a lot of projects coming. What people should know is Legacy is coming full energy, full flesh in all directions in all areas Period. from all angles <laughs> so just stay tuned and be ready for legacy because legacy is always ready for you and i just have one last question for you yeah. what would you tell your younger self now looking back man i'll tell my younger self um you'll be fine man just just keep doing what you're doing um and this to anyone out there who thinks they can you know relate to my story or to my journey um you're gonna be able to do it you're gonna figure it out it might look like is the end of the world right now i felt like i was at the bottom of my life um you know i'm what a teenager 17 years i'm a high school teacher um i didn't go to i wasn't in university you know i just felt like everything was over for me but you know i'm here today and i'm speaking to you um so i'm talking to you young george um you'll be fine just keep doing what you're doing keep applying the pressure keep stepping on the next you'll be fine period that's amazing <laughs> george now we're gonna jump into the riddle part so george i have three questions for you yes one it's pretty easy um if there's any artist you would want to work with alive or dead who would it be alive or dead mm -hmm. who would it be alive right now would be whisked um <laughs> dead would be fella Kuti. if i could work with fella Kuti, it would make my day that's dope um but yeah that, that would be the two that's dope that's dope okay second question yes what came first the chicken or the egg <laughs> um i think that chicken came first yeah i think the chicken came first and then the chicken made the egg um yeah don't quote me on that one but that's what i think <laughs> okay last question yes would you rather have more time or more money 
would I have rather have more time or more money? I would say more time because I believe in my ability to make it happen. And so as long as I have the necessary time to make it happen, I will make it happen. Um, and that's all that matters at the end of the day. That's amazing. Well, that's all we have today for the George Legacy Show. Thank you so much and have a good night.